here on the ground, change happens fast. Problems feel frequent and urgent. It's loud and anxiety runs high. From a satellite view, the Earth looks the same as it did thousands of years ago. We've been here before. Let's learn from our past and shoot for a better future. Hello and welcome to this episode of A Satellite View. I'm Todd Mickelson, your host, speaking at you from Saturday, September 7th, 2024 in the Space and Time Continuum. Some interesting things happened this week. Just when you think things are kind of evening out a little or dying down. I mean, Kamala Harris right now is doing prep for the debate that's coming on Tuesday. So she's been doing a little bit less stuff for the last only couple days. Less coverage of that. Uh, Trump has tried to take advantage of it and failed miserably. Every time he tries to do something, I believe he hurts his campaign. Also, some uh, developments that you would think would be helping him, I believe are not. We'll talk about that coming up in the second segment. But I promised you last week that something I did not get to, which was the shambles of the Republican Party in many ways. There's a lot of talk about Republican elected leaders, not in public, but in private, hoping that Donald Trump will not win. They want him to lose. But what I wanted to touch on last week and didn't have time to do, the shambles of the Republican Party right now, their apparatus at really all levels. So that's, a, that's way at the top level. Let's talk about individual states. This is pretty remarkable, I think. Uh, let's go back in time. Here on A Satellite View, we like to look at things from a satellite view and look backwards and forwards and learn from what happened in the past and how it could change the future. Because things that happened in the past, of course, have an effect on what's going on now. And if we don't pay attention to that, we're not going to make the best move right now. Everyone's trying to keep us scared that Donald Trump has a chance of winning. Just the fact that I'm telling you that a lot of elected officials, I'm talking about, you know, Congress people, senators, they want Trump to lose. Liz Cheney and Dick Cheney are voting for Kamala Harris, along with the many Republicans who spoke at the DNC, and along with a lot of Republicans who might not have spoke at the DNC, but did also not speak at the RNC. So let's go into these individual states. Let's go back in time, all the way back to 2021. After a federal sex trafficking scandal related to a prominent donor and allegations of a toxic work environment, it led to the, fell, uh, it led to the fall of Minnesota Republican chairperson Jennifer Carnahan. One of her best friends, she was in photos going to Twins games and things like that, was a child trafficker. He's in prison. One of her best friends and one of the biggest, most prominent Republican donors in Minnesota is in prison for child trafficking. He was making porn videos with underage girls in his apartment in Minneapolis. All right, that happened. She was replaced by David Han, who I have talked about on this show because I keep getting fundraising letters from David Han because David Han doesn't have enough money to access any data. So he thinks I am going to give him money. <laughs> Let's go to 2022. After the devastating 2022 election, Republicans were left reeling. Some big donors threatened to leave the state. And at one point in the year, the party had $53 in cash. Not $53,000. $53. Okay, that's Minnesota. This has been happening for years now. Minnesota Republican Party still does not have enough money to run proper campaigns. They don't have enough money to help the down ballot candidates. They don't have enough money, like I said, to even have data to know better than to send somebody who ran in the opposing party for the State House of Representatives asking him if he will donate money to their party. It's pretty easy to find out who I am. 
And the Republican Party used to know who I was years ago because they had access to data necessary to run campaigns. Okay, I'm going to read from an MSNBC. It uh, puts this concisely, some of these stories. Former State Representative Dave Williams' tenure as chairman of the Colorado Republican Party was already a mess before the summer began, but things went from bad to worse a couple of months ago. Indeed, it was in early June when the state GOP chair issued a call to burn all pride flags, at which point several local party officials decided it was time to show Williams the door. The vote was not close, though it apparently uh, is being contested. In fact, after the vote to remove Williams as the state Republican Party chair, the Coloradan dismissed the meeting as illegal and illegitimate, claiming he was still the state GOP chair and said the matter would actually be resolved by a separate vote at a different meeting, which isn't something that can happen. His reaction suggests a legal dispute is inevitable, which probably isn't what party officials want to see as the election season takes shape. Earlier this year, for example, the Republican Party of Michigan removed Christina Caramo as state party chair after months of infighting and weak fundraising. I think they were down to almost no money as well. Caramo claimed the votes didn't count, and as of the weekend, she's still asking the courts to reinstate her. Now, she ended up showing up at the state convention and had to get escorted out because she was refusing to let the proceeds go on because she was claiming she's still the chair. They had already removed her and gotten a new chair, and she ended up getting escorted out by police. This is a woman that the Republican Party of Michigan voted in and supported to be their state party chairperson. And within, I don't know, a year and a half, they were escorting her out of their own convention. They called the police on her. Soon after that, the Republican Party of Florida removed Christian Ziegler as its state party chair after he faced allegations of rape and video voyeurism. Okay, now we're in Florida. This guy and his wife had a threesome with another woman. No problems there. I got no problems there. Envy. But no problems. (laughs) But then it seems that he didn't quite have the right idea about that arrangement. If something like that happens, you got to be careful about everybody's feelings, right? Well, he thought he could force himself then on that woman. She says that he showed up without his wife. So now it's no longer a threesome. It's just him and her. And he, he thought, well, I can force myself on you. He raped her. She at least alleges that he raped her. Okay. That's the state party chair that the Republican Party of Florida voted and supported in. Two weeks after that, the Republican Party of Arizona chair, Jeff DeWitt, resigned following the release of a dubious audio recording of a conversation he apparently had with failed gubernatorial candidate Carrie Lake. She accused him of trying to bribe her to drop out of the race. He tried to deny it, but she had recordings of it. She recorded him bribing her to get out of the race. More evidence that uh, elected officials, Republican elected officials, realize people like Carrie Lake and Donald Trump is hurting their party. He ended up resigning. Carrie Lake is still running for the Senate. She is currently 15 points behind her opponent, uh, Ruben Gallego. We talked about that last week. He takes a 15-point lead over Kerry Lake. Do you think that the people who are supporting that are going to vote for Donald Trump at the top of the ticket? They're going to go vote for Ruben Gallego, and then they're going to vote for Donald Trump? No. This helps Kamala Harris and Tim Walz and the country and the world. So a month after this thing happened in Florida, Ronna Romney McDaniel resigned as chair of the Republican National Committee after losing Donald Trump's support. Donald Trump puts his daughter-in-law in in her place, who just released a music video. I saw part of it, and wow, I I totally support anybody doing what they want to do, and I'm happy for her if she's having a blast, and she's proud of it, and she thinks it's great. But if she thinks those things, she's just simply wrong. And I know this is a matter of opinions when it comes to music, but if you find it, listen to it, 
watch it. And I think you'll agree that uh, what I'm saying is true. <laughs> a lot, a lot of pitch correction. It would be really fun to hear the tracks without the pitch correction. And her voice is really weird. Again, don't have a problem with that, but it's, it sounds not real. Anyway, we're talking about the Republican Party here. So I just went through this. Minnesota, Florida, Colorado, Michigan, and Arizona have all kicked their state party chair out of the chairmanship. And the national party chair resigned because Trump doesn't like her. She changed her name just to appease him. She got rid of the Romney because she's, I think, Mitt Romney's niece. And I don't like Mitt Romney, so I don't know if I can support you. So she goes, oh, I got rid of my middle name. I went and legally changed my name to just Ronna McDaniel. Wow. All right. So there's that part of the story. Let's go on to now talk about Donald Trump raising less and less each month as time goes on here. In August, Donald Trump raised $130 million. Kamala Harris raised $361 million. That's three times more than Donald Trump. The Democrat has a whooping $404 million in cash reserves for the final two-month sprint into Election Day. The cash stockpiled across Harris's affiliated committees tops the $295 million that Trump's political operation said it had. They always have to say what Trump's political operation said it had, because Kamala Harris lets us look at the actual numbers. Donald Trump's campaign tells us what the numbers are. So likely, it's not as much. So Kamala Harris began on the 21st of July. Since then, she's raised $615 million. At this pace, uh, she's going to raise over a billion dollars in this campaign. Normally, you do that over a two-year period of time. She's doing it in, a, what is it, three months? She's going to raise a billion dollars in a little more than three months. All right? That's more talking about the shambles. There's a site, there's a bunch of them, but the main one, uh, some called something like a path to 270. It's an interactive map that you can go and turn the states red or blue and see, you know, come up with a strategy for you know, what states to work on if you're a campaign. It's kind of fun to go to just as a regular person when you first go to it, it gives you a map of the current status of things. Swing states are just sort of beige or yellow because they're swing states. They're toss-ups. And then, like, you know, California's blue, Florida's red, but not anymore. When you go to this map, Florida and Texas have turned beige yellow. They were red for I don't know how many years, at least since sometime in the 1990s. I could be wrong about Florida, but I mean, they've been red for many, many, many years. And they just turned to beige yellow. Texas and Florida. <laughs> okay, you probably heard that Liz Cheney said it's not good enough to just not vote for Trump. I'm voting for Kamala Harris. And then a day later or so, she was asked, what about your dad, Dick Cheney? She said, my dad, Dick Cheney, is voting for Kamala Harris because he says Trump is the biggest danger to the United States in its history. And then she said, here in Texas, you have somebody who's running for the Senate who's a great candidate. Colin Allred, who is running against Ted Cruz. Liz Cheney is supporting. She said, I will do everything I can to get Colin Allred. I will be working for him to beat Ted Cruz in Texas. This is Liz Cheney. Okay, we have begun to talk about what's going to happen with the Republican Party. And we're starting to see it come into shape. Since all of this is showing the Republicans in shambles, I want to talk about something that I think is a further knockdown to Donald Trump and his campaign. 
it's something that you think is going to help him. But when you really think about it, just really think about it. We're going to talk about exactly what that is. After a short break, I'm Todd Mickelson. You're listening to A Satellite View. We'll be right back. reminder that if you like the music you're hearing on a satellite view, go to toddmickelson.com and you can find on the music link a lot of music that I have written and recorded over many years, including the music you hear here. Say, something happened. It was either Thursday or Friday. I was in my car and I heard Judge Marshawn is postponing the sentencing date for Donald Trump. It was scheduled for September 18th. It is for the hush money, Stormy Daniels, which actually is election interference and fraud charges that he's guilty of. 34 counts. It was seeming more and more like he was going to get some sort of incarceration. It was going to get really interesting. But then Judge Marchand said, no, I'm delaying it until November 26th, I believe after the election. Still long before inauguration, but after the election. How interesting would it be if Trump actually won and then was sentenced to jail two weeks later? (laughs) Uh, Of course, we know that he's not going to win. And I think that this signals even more that that's true. I was really disappointed and pissed off. I was like, you know, what the hell? What happened here? This doesn't seem like the universe is making things go in the right direction with this. What the hell? (laughs) I was pretty bummed out. Again, for about a half an hour. The same amount I was bummed out when I heard that Joe Biden pulled out of the race. But then a half hour later, he endorsed Kamala Harris. Which I had already wrapped my head around a few weeks before that. But I still had no idea how amazingly well she was going to do how amazingly good she was going to be at this, including making the important decision, picking Tim Walls as her vice president running mate. When I was in my car, I was getting something for lunch, and then I came back into my shop, and then I was watching all this stuff I watched to put this show together, and I saw Ben Micellis on Midas Touch. He started showing us emails that he was getting from Donald Trump. Now, Ben had recorded this before the announcement that the sentencing was going to be delayed. He was starting to get emails, because he's on the list, from Donald Trump saying things like, hey, you want this hat? This is a special sentencing day hat. Oh, the darkest day in American history is coming in 13 days, Ben. Can you give us money? You know, things like that. Really focusing on the day of sentencing. Ramping up, raising money off it. We got to remember that these MAGOTs, many, many of them are starting to just get sick of Trump. They're losing interest. He can't get people to come to his rallies the same way he used to be able to. People leave his rallies even when they're there, when they have waited in line to get in, seemingly losing interest enough to maybe not show up to vote for him. But if he was sentenced to prison, it would reinvigorate their anger. That's what he was trying to do. I'm sure he doesn't want to go to jail. Him being sentenced to jail would help his campaign because his base, his hardcore Trumper followers, are that crazy. It would reinvigorate them. They're the hornet's nest that has started to hibernate for the winter. And this would just kick it. And they would all wake up again and start buzzing around, maybe even mailing their votes in. Instead, now he's not being sentenced. 
there's no juice there, Don. I think he was counting on it, and I think it would have helped his his campaign. I think it would have brought up at least slightly some of his numbers. I think it would have reinvigorated his base. Fox News would have been able to get back on track with something because they're in shambles as well. So don't fret over these things. It looks like the universe still is steering things. It looks like the universe is saving planet Earth. They have chosen to save planet Earth and not let us humans extinct ourselves. And of course, a necessary thing is to make sure Donald Trump loses. And by 2028, he's not going to be able to run again. He will either be in prison or dead. From the way things are going, the latter, I think, uh, he's not looking well. He's not acting well. And the stress and frustration is killing him. I want to look at my notes here real quick. Um, Oh, something really frustrating about this school shooting in Georgia. I don't want to talk about it too much. This is a 14-year-old kid. Uh, He can't legally have, he can have a gun in Georgia. He can't legally buy a gun anywhere. And last year, He was questioned by the FBI because he said he wanted to perform a school shooting. But because of Georgia's lax in gun safety laws, in this case, no red flag laws, they couldn't intervene. They couldn't arrest him. They couldn't put up a red flag. If Georgia would have had red flag laws like Minnesota now does, this school shooting could have been avoided. You Republicans, Ted Cruz, Lindsey Graham, I don't have time to name all of you cowards who take money from the NRA and therefore are cowards in talking about gun safety. You're killing our children. You are murdering our children. You can say that I can't say that, but I just did. Because it's true. All right. Obviously, there's just not enough that can be said about such a tragic thing. Four people dead, nine people injured. But I wanted to say that. Okay, here's something. Alan Lickman, you've heard me talk about him, the guy who's got the 13 keys to the White House. He wasn't ready to make his prediction last time I talked about him a few weeks ago. But he said a lot would have to go wrong for Kamala Harris to lose this election. He made his prediction, his official prediction. He assigned the keys and how they're falling into place. And now, and I'm not going to go through it because that would take a whole episode, but he has made his prediction that Kamala Harris will win. This is Alan Lickman, who has predicted every presidential race correctly since 1981, and his methodology is based on every election since Abraham Lincoln. So his system is set up so that there's not a single election since Abraham Lincoln that goes against his system. And when he came up with the system in 1981, so therefore 1984 was the first presidential election that he started predicting in real time, he's predicted every single one of them correctly, including Donald Trump winning 2016, when people like Nate Silver were saying, you know, 71% chance that uh, Hillary would win. When they're talking about Liz Cheney endorsing Kamala Harris, everyone said, you know, the stance she took after January 6th, she sacrificed her political career. I disagree. I think she's got the long version of her political career. And she realized she's just going to have to sit on the sidelines here for a little bit. She's going to lose her credentials within the Republican Party, but she could see that the Republican Party was going down, going down hard. Same with Adam Kinzinger and some other leaders that have come out that are brave enough to come out. I I mentioned elected leaders who privately talk about the best thing for the Republican Party would be for Donald Trump to lose. Who do you think they're going to vote for, by the way? Donald Trump's losing the votes of the Republicans in Congress? (laughs) They're going to vote for Kamala Harris because they want Donald Trump to lose, but they won't say it publicly. Liz Cheney, Adam Kinzinger, people like that will say it publicly. Even Dick Cheney, 
has allowed his daughter to announce that he's going to vote for Kamala Harris publicly. Now, Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger, a few weeks ago, when I said, you know, we need to start considering what's going to happen with the Republican Party, it's looking more and more clear. I'm thinking in 2028, Liz Cheney is going to be the Republican nominee for president, and she's going to be running against Kamala Harris. I could really see that happening. I'm not making an official prediction of that, but I could really see that happening. She's going to be a leader in the Republican Party. So is Adam Kinzinger. So are some of these other people. Ted Cruz? No, not so much. Ted Cruz is going to lose his election in 2024. Liz Cheney's working for his opponent. Ted Cruz is going to lose his election. He's not even going to be a senator anymore. And if he tries to start saying, hey, I I knew, like Kevin McCarthy's trying to say, hey, I tried to tell the Donald Trump campaign that they shouldn't do this, you know, that they need to start talking about policy and stop attacking Kamala's race and her gender. How do you think that's going to go on Tuesday night, by the way, when the debate may or may not happen? I still think there's a pretty good chance that Donald Trump's going to figure out a way to drop out. At this point, I think he would have to announce, COVID is still here because Joe Biden and Kam- Kamala, the many ways to say her name, Kamala administration has allowed COVID to stay, and now I have COVID, so I can't do the debate. Doubtful. I'm not saying I think that's going to happen, but <laughs> at this point, that's probably what he would have to do. He put out a tweet or whatever you call it just this morning, Saturday three days before the debate, something about, we agreed to not have lifts, like something to stand on. (laughs) Is there an argument going on about that? And he's going to use that as like, she said she wouldn't, she wouldn't show up unless she could stand on a phone book. So I pulled out. That wasn't our agreement. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Other news, Judge Chutkin, major update, a hearing this last week where, of course, Donald Trump was trying to get the case thrown out again, or at least delay it. Now, the story here is, this was a trial that would have happened months ago. This is for the January 6th and, you know, blocking the election in 2020. Very important case that Donald Trump someday is going to be found guilty on many counts and is going to go to prison. Uh, It got delayed because the Supreme Court delayed it by saying that, you know, this whole presidential immunity thing. This could have happened months ago. Donald Trump could have been found guilty. The country could have seen all these horrid things that Donald Trump did. They could have turned against him. And right now, it might be Kamala Harris against Nikki Haley. Certainly anybody better than Trump. And the Republican Party might have a shot of winning this election and staying alive. Maybe the shift would already have begun in the Republican Party without having to actually be completely put to death as a party like they are going to be in November this year. Has this backfired on the Supreme Court and Donald Trump and the Republican Party? She's been ordered by the Supreme Court to figure out what he can and can't be immune for. He can only be held immune for presidential actions, not personal actions. Jack Smith has already reinstated, has already done a new indictment with a whole new grand jury, and he's leaving out the parts that would likely be presidential actions. So he stripped that stuff off and represented the indictment with still all four original counts that a new grand jury hearing has decided he's guilty of and should go to trial. She said, no, we're going to have this hearing, which is going to include actual witness testimony in this new grand jury hearing that nobody's ever heard. And people seem to be focusing on the threats he made to his vice president, Mike Pence. Apparently, Mike Pence provided witness testimony to this grand jury. I'm not sure if he did himself, but other witnesses did. But I think he might have, if he has, his testimony is going to be revealed. Before Election Day, Judge Chutkin said, I'm not considering Election Day. I'm just considering a four count indictment that needs to be dealt with. This is moving forward. This is really huge. These are huge developments. And 
He can't say, Judge Marshawn is an illegal judge who just wants to throw me in jail. He can't say that because the sentencing date is now going to be after election day. He can complain about it then, but it doesn't matter anymore. Trump is going to become irrelevant very soon. We're, I think, 60 days exactly right now from election day. Two months. In two months, we're going to find out that Trump is going to become more and more irrelevant. And over time, he's going to start to get punished for all this crap. It is happening. It has begun. It is happening. So don't let, when they talk about polling, don't let it scare you. I know like uh, Nate Silver is saying, I, somebody asked me about what I think about Nate Silver. Nate Silver is saying that Trump is going to win now, but he's basing it off of polls that contradict each other. He'll line up a few polls where they're either even or Trump is winning by a little bit, but there are other polls where Kamala is winning, some of them in Wisconsin where she's winning by nine points and in Michigan. So Nate Silver saying, oh, in Wisconsin and Michigan, they're either even or Trump is slightly winning because he's doing polling averages that are false. Some of the polls he refers to are not good polls. So it's BS. Nate Silver is living in the past. So don't listen to Nate Silver. I could go into more detail. I was meaning to, but we, we keep running out of time every week. <laughs> Maybe I need to, uh, you know, the show is long enough. Um, maybe we'll do two shows a week. I don't, I, I don't, anyway, I, I'm getting frustrated more and more at the end of every show of promising you I'll go into depth about, I will go into depth about, um, uh, the polling, uh, and why it's, you know, not working. I'm writing it down right now. You can hear my pen. Uh, so we'll, we'll start there next week. Okay. Thanks so much for listening. Let's keep each other sane. Don't worry about the polls. Florida and Texas are toss-ups, according to some people now. It's getting crazy in a good way. Not a bad way, in a good way. The sentencing being delayed turns out, I think, to be a good thing. And I came up with that on my own that day. But in the ensuing day or two since then, I'm hearing more and more of the sources that I go to making the same point that I just made here. So it's not just me. There is a consensus growing that the delay of the sentencing of Donald Trump is a good thing in this election, politically speaking. So don't fret. If you hear something that sounds like it's good news for Trump and bad news for Kamala, give it at least a half hour <laughs> because you start to figure out, oh, wow, no, this is actually good. The universe is acting in mysterious ways. <laughs> the first picture you get of something, it scares the crap out of you. Likely, within a few hours, you're going to start to see, you know, actually, I think this might be good. So, remember that. And keep listening to A Satellite View here where we help each other keep sane during these crazy times. But I'm having fun. I hope you can have some fun, too. I know it's fall now, but uh, the weather is still beautiful. So let's enjoy it. Well, the fall is, uh, is one of the most beautiful weather times of the year. Anyway, so we're having fun. Thank you so much for listening. I will speak at you next week. been listening to A Satellite View with Todd Mickelson. Go to toddmickelson.com for links and more information.